Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another charging site review which I haven't done in you know a fairly long time. So I have a trip that I'm heading down uh, just for the day and when I was just looking at the maps I realized there are a couple of EVgo charging stations literally just went online within the last few weeks that uh, haven't been online before, haven't been here when I've made trips so I decided you know what, I'll kind of try to prioritize them as I make this uh, loop through the Bay Area because these are the new EVgo Ultium Ready charging sites that were funded by GM. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure to check them out because also uh, EVgo is now working with Delta primarily. So some of these charging sites had been Signet previously but now they're working with Delta and Delta produces two different chargers there's a DC City charger which I've used before um, it's a hundred kilowatt 200 amp split power charger uh, and, and I've used them in a number of sites but Delta also makes a 350 kilowatt split power charger and those are supposed to be the new 350 kilowatt chargers that EVgo is prioritizing in these build outs and that they're going to be using this site happens to have one now I'm not going to get too critical about this uh, when new sites go online I know a lot of people just jump on it and say oh this site opened up everything needs to be working perfectly that's not exactly how things work and especially in some place like California it's really difficult sometimes to bring these sites fully up to power right away so that 350 kilowatt charger Delta charger is not currently online right now so I wasn't able to use it so I'm just using one of the Delta chargers now one of the other Delta chargers there are two here uh, the city chargers uh, the activation wasn't working so I was worried maybe my auto charge went off but it wasn't reading the RFID either so I went ahead and plugged into uh, this other one auto charge spooled up right away uh, chargers working so uh, I'm just uh, right now topping off before I head south but I want to walk through the site give my ideas about uh, you know what I think the site score is based on uh, accessibility based on amenities based on site concentration uh, location and charging speed uh, and this actually is location wise we're just off of interstate uh, 680 and we're actually only a block over from an electrify America 150 kilowatt electrify America charger that I've used at the Walmart uh, just off the freeway. This one happens to be in an REI parking lot, but it's actually surrounded by a few other businesses like a Home Depot, but also some places to eat and like a Starbucks coffee. And one more interesting, interesting fact about this charging site, which is going to, let's just say, be controversial to say the least, is there are no Chatamo connectors. That's right, none. Let's dive in. All right, so here we see the cabinet, and like I said, this is the interesting aspect of it right here. Uh, CCS, 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 and then the 350 kilowatt uh, Delta chargers, they're always going to be purely CCS. So this isn't going to have any of the Tesla adapters. It's not going to have any of the uh, uh, Chatamo adapters. So this is kind of a limited use site, which I'm not a huge fan of. And well, it's a good segue because let's just jump right into the access score. Um, I'm only gonna score this an eight out of 10 for access. And part of it is, yes, I realize this is more of a city support site and you're, you're really here to, to use the businesses, but you are still close enough to the freeway that this is a travel site. But here's the thing, with this, there's no full pull-through parking, there's no place for a trailer. Uh, you'd expect some place like an REI, this is an outdoorsy sort of place. You're gonna expect that someone's gonna be here with a trailer, uh, so they're gonna have to detach, otherwise they're gonna take up this whole line here, and that's not gonna help, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna have to detach in order to plug in with the trailer. So docking a point for that, I. I wouldn't dock a full point for the fact that this is like two blocks off the freeway, it's a lot of left turns on lights, but in combination 
with the fact that this is only CCS, meaning only CCS EVs can use it. There's no level two, there's nothing for plug-in hybrids, there's nothing for any of the existing Chatamo uh, vehicles, which EVgo used to be very, very friendly to. Um, yeah, that, that's easily gonna take a full nother point off, uh, which is why I'm only giving it an eight out of 10 for access. Now, in terms of amenities, uh, I have, I'm going to give this probably another 8 out of 10. And, you know, the reason why is all the stuff that you want to do is here, right? So there's places to eat, there's places to snack, there's places to grab coffee, there's places to shop. A lot of things that you can do in an REI. Um, I don't know, like, how reasonable it is to say that Home Depot is an amenity, but it is a destination. Uh, a location that you could be using while you're here so uh, but the areas where this is gonna you know get docked in terms of amenities are uh, you know there's not a whole lot in terms of of lighting or 24-hour services bathrooms things like that uh, obviously no squeegees no trash cans and the big one is there's no canopy there's no covering here and yeah it's a foggy day we've got a marine layer right now uh, that's not always the case in the Bay Area, um, yeah, especially in the East Bay. These screens are going to get hot, these units are going to get hot, or you could get rained on, whatever. And the fact that there's no covering here, uh, that's 8 out of 10 for amenities. Now in terms of uh, concentration, this is going to be an interesting one because this is something that's sort of been in flux as it is. I've had a lot of discussions with a lot of people like Steve at Plug and Play EV. We've talked about this a lot too, is right now, I think my sweet spot for site concentration, basically the number of chargers per site is about six right now. And that's sort of saying, you know, if you're six, you're a little bit above average, you're about where we need you to be, uh, which I feel like would be a, a strong seven out of 10. Now, with this site, the reason I'm going to treat it as a six charger site is because like I said, there are three units, but there are six heads that can actively be charging. Uh, so you can have six active charging sessions at a time on this site, not full power, but it's still access because one of the worst things that can happen is you get to a charging site and you can't access a charger at all. Now, I, I do have my preferences that I'd like the, the chargers to be offering full power, full stated power at all times. So I'm not a huge fan of things like the Chem Powers, Power Splitting, Electrify America's balanced chargers or these split charging sessions. I, I really prefer them to only be done as an emergency, but they still, do count so this is essentially uh by you know if you were using tesla's supercharger metrics right this would be a six charger site because it's six active plugs with really the parking to support them if you notice there's enough that with these cords and they can reach multiple vehicles there's enough room here for six vehicles to be charging at one time so i'm going to give this a seven out of ten for site concentration and in terms of location yes this is something of a, a an industrial park but it's also a retail center and like i said it's not too far off the freeway um you know there it, there's no lack of chargers in the east bay but i couldn't even count all of the electric vehicles i saw just pulling off the freeway here there's just too many to count in the east bay so the more chargers the merrier um, you know, in 10 years, I, I'd be surprised if it weren't a majority of electric vehicles on the road in this area of, you know, so, uh, central California. So these chargers are needed and this is in a good location on 680, kind of helps you bypass the Bay Area, travelers coming up and down, but then also it, it is sort of an urban support center uh, where you have the option of shopping for locals or for travelers. And like I said, it's just off the freeway. Uh, so overall, I would say this is a relatively important site to have. Yes, there is an Electrify America at the Walmart just a block over, but again, having this distribution of chargers at different shopping plazas is really important. So I would give it another seven out of 10 for location. And then finally for speed, we're looking at a 350 kilowatt charger right now. Now, 
on the placard this does say that it is only 500 amp up to 350 kilowatt max however uh, I have seen this unit outputting, not this specific one, but these Delta uh, 350 kilowatt uh, chargers, I have seen them outputting as much as 540 amps. Right now, the only no vehicles that I know of uh, that we could confirm can actually draw that much power are Teslas with their CCS adapter. And yes, this, this will feed over 200 kilowatts into a Tesla with their CCS adapter. Uh, so these are really the fastest, most powerful 350 kilowatt chargers currently available on the market. Uh, plus the fact that they, you know, they split power. So 250 kilo, you could pull like a Hyundai Ioniq 5 and a Kia EV6 in here, plug one into each end, and they'd both be maxing out at, you know, somewhere around 175 kilowatts. So, um, yeah, this is a really powerful, really strong charger. You know, with these other 200 amp chargers, they're not really pushing like the envelope. But I think the combination of this, I, I think you can't discount the fact that this is the fastest charger currently available, faster than anything that Electrify America has uh, deployed. Uh, so I think the site is easily a, you know, a 10 out of 10 because I rank up for speed based on the fastest charging power that's available at that site. I'm not going to deduct it if there were a level 2 charger or only a 100 kilowatt charger like these over here. Uh, this is capable of maxing out pretty much any vehicle that wants to charge on it. So uh, yeah, 10 out of 10 for charging speed. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, that's a total site score, if I'm doing my math correctly, of 40. That's a solid B site. Now, yeah, there are some things that they could do to improve it. I would love to see EVgo uh, expand these a little bit. But again, these are city support chargers. The Electrify America at the Walmart is only three chargers too. And I'm a much bigger fan of this sort of distributed model anyway, where I would rather have a half dozen smaller charging sites off of an exit than I would one single big mega charger with 40, 50, 60 stalls. Now the fact that this can also charge six vehicles at the same time, that's a huge advantage. And yeah, it's not gonna be the fastest if you're splitting two 200 amp chargers here, these 100 uh, kilowatt chargers. Uh, but if you have faster charging electric vehicles, you can favor that 350 kilowatt. Like I said, two uh, eGIMP platforms, Hyundai, Kia, could pull in, plug in here, and both of them would be at 80% in about 20 minutes using that same charger right at the same time so i uh, just have to make sure we're cognizant of who might be using the site who needs what priority anyway i need to hit the road but i hope you enjoyed it i, I hope you're enjoying these new ultium ready evgo charging sites i know i am i'm going to check a few more out hopefully they can get into a cadence where they're bringing the whole site uh, up online faster and more efficiently so like the moment they flip the switch everything is working all the activations are working uh, all the chargers are powered up and everybody can just jump in and use it like i said i'm a huge proponent of charging providers inviting the ev community for sort of these ribbon cuttings and opening ceremonies for every site that they do have technicians on hand basically troubleshoot and get a bunch of different evs on site opened up using chargers, support your local EV communities, um, and then just get them involved. Also, I'd love to hear what you think about this uh, only CCS uh, charger design. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of this site design, frankly. A lot of the DIY EVs that technically can't use EVgo, EVgo only wants automakers, right, or automaker authorized or created devices hooking up to their chargers. They don't want non-automaker EVs or DIY or conversions using their chargers. Uh, but that was standing, there are still a lot of Chatamo vehicles that were released by automakers who can't use this charging site. So I'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, and then if this is funded by GM money, though, the thing we have to remember is GM isn't making any Chatamo EVs. So EVgo, if they're building it for GM and for GM's EVs, oh, Though everybody else can use them, of course, they're only going to be including CCS and no Chatham. So I'd love to hear what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.